learning six more functional groups. So you guys have already learned how to name alkane functional groups like methyl, ethyl, propyl, stuff like that. And then you've also learned hydrocarbons. You learned chloro, fluoro, bromo. Um, so these are functional groups that aren't any of those. These functional groups for the most part, well, they all include oxygen. So this is like if you have an oxygen functional group. So the first type is an alcohol. This is the general formula, ROR, general formula. The R means any length of carbon chain. So I could have one carbon there. I could have 15 carbons. I could have a million carbons. If there's an OH, it's an alcohol. The name ends in OL. So you could identify that it's an alcohol because for here, for methanol, it ends in OL. For ethanol, it ends in OL. Or you could identify it by the picture. Um, I have the OH that's bonded to a carbon. Here I have the OH bonded to a carbon. I'm only going to ask you to identify these. I will not ask you um, to draw them or name them, nothing like that. I'm only going to ask you to identify. So I will give you a picture and I will say, you know, what is this? And you're going to have to tell me it's an alcohol or what's the next one? It's an ether. Um, the general formula for an ether is ROR. These can be different Rs or they can be the same. It just means, again, any length of carbon chain. So we have some examples down here. We have the oxygen bonded to a one carbon chain and a one carbon chain. Um, so that's something where it's like the same Rs. Um, but here in this last one, we have a two carbon chain and a one carbon chain. So any length. But if you have two carbons separated by an oxygen, we call that an ether. So that's how you could identify it from a picture. In the name, the name, it always actually says ether. So that should be a really easy one to identify from the name. Notice these are dimethyl ether, diethyl ether, ethyl methyl ether. So again, if it's an ether, the name always ends in ether. But if you're looking at a picture, there needs to be an oxygen in between two carbons. Next is an aldehyde. So aldehydes, their general formula is this picture over here. So um, the first two don't have any double bonded oxygen. So ether and alcohol, they don't have any double bonded oxygen. They're all single bonded. The next four all contain double bonded oxygens. So first thing you should do is ask yourself, is there a double bonded oxygen? If not, it's an alcohol or an ether. If it is, then it's one of these next four. So an aldehyde here, you can see from the picture, it has a carbon, a double bonded oxygen, and it's attached to another carbon and a hydrogen. So basically this means like an end carbon. If I had a really long chain, if I had a million, this double bonded oxygen would be on the last carbon. So you can see here that I have a carbon chain, a carbon, and then that double bonded oxygen is on my last carbon. Uh, so that's how you could tell it from a picture. If it had a double bonded oxygen on the very last carbon, then it's an aldehyde. If it ends in AL, it is also an aldehyde if the name ends in AL. So again, that's different than OL. OL was alcohol, AL is aldehyde. This is the most common aldehyde, formaldehyde. You guys should know the name formaldehyde and you should know the structure. Notice there's only one carbon. There's no any, there's no other eight, there's no other carbons. It is the smallest aldehyde um, with only one carbon. Ketone is the next one. So it is kind of like an aldehyde, except it being an end carbon, it's a middle carbon. So if I look at this example of propanone, the O-N-E ending indicates a ketone. And then the structure, we know it's a ketone because that double bonded oxygen is on a middle carbon. If it was on the end carbon, if this oxygen was here or if it was here, then it would be a, a, an aldehyde. But since it's on a middle carbon, it's a ketone. So this is the smallest structure. So where it says like most common, it's also the smallest one, but it is one that is very commonly used and it's acetone, which is now polish remover or any sort of like paint thinner or stuff like that um, is acetone. And it's the smallest one because if you had two carbons, both of those would be end carbons. So both of them would be aldehydes right? You have to have a middle carbon. So if this oxygen is on any middle carbon, if you had a thousand um, carbons and it was on the second one, that would be considered a ketone. Next one is carboxylic acid. Now this kind of looks like a, um, kind of looks like a aldehyde because the carbon is like the double bonded oxygen is on the last carbon, but instead of being attached to an H, it's attached to the OH. So carboxylic acid has the double bonded O and an OH. So that's how you can tell the double bonded O and the OH. The name for carboxylic acid always ends in oic acid. 
So propanoic acid, ethanoic acid. So that's how you can determine it from the name. Again, the structure is the double bonded oxygen and the single bonded OH. The last one is an ester. Here you have a double bonded oxygen to a single bonded oxygen, but then you have a carbon chain. On that last one, that oxygen was bonded to an H, but on this ester, it's bonded to another carbon. So this happens like somewhere in between. So here, ethyl propanoate, you can kind of see that the ester group is right here in the middle. So A-T-E is how we name an ester if the, if the name ends in A-T-E. And then again, it's this middle group here. Um, and then just as a side note, an ester is a product of a reaction between an acid and an alcohol. So when you have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, you get an ester and you get water. That's like a four-step process that you should know, you should keep in mind. Um, this is actually a really good slide if you wanted to hang on to the slide for the example of the reaction. And again, esters end in eight. So if you were given a name and asked to identify it and it ended in eight, A-T-E, you would say that that was an ester.